Let's discuss how to write your own autobiography. Autobiographies are books that present the experiences of a person's life from their own point of view. Often, the writer organizes the events chronologically, beginning with their birth or earliest recollections and ending with the present day. Malcolm X's story was a remarkable one. He had a tumultuous childhood. Later, while in prison, he became a prominent activist for the Nation of Islam. He was assassinated at the age of 39. As a young person, you may not feel that you've had enough eventful experiences to write about. The important thing is to write about events in your life that are of importance to you. Where were you born? Have you ever moved to a new city? Have you ever lost a loved one? Organize these events in a logical way so the reader can easily follow your story. It is important to understand the significance of the events in your life. Events that change your life dramatically are significant. What were the significant events in Malcolm X's life? The death of his father, his turbulent childhood, going to prison, and discovering Islam. How have the events that occurred in your life affected you? Have they made you feel proud or sad? Did those events cause you to look at things differently? Race was an important issue for Malcolm X. He felt strongly that he needed to become an activist to make changes in society. When you write your own autobiography, ask yourself, how has the world around you affected you? Who are your parents? Where do you live? Is it a time of war or peace? An autobiography describes events that happen in one's own life. The personal significance of these events is important. Details provide the historical context in which the events took place. Finally, an organized structure, often chronological, provides order to the story. Write a short autobiography. Include the major events in your life and explain why they are important to you. You don't have to be a great artist to create an effective storyboard. They're just sketches. Stick figures work just as well as a fully rendered drawing of a person. All you need to do is to convey in the simplest terms possible what the camera is looking at at that moment. An establishing shot is a long shot that shows location and mood. A full shot is a long shot that captures the character from head to toe. A medium shot is one where you show the character from the knees up, while a close shot is from the top of the head to about mid-waist. A tight shot is where a character fills nearly the entire frame. One shot students use a lot is the point of view shot, or POV. And that's a shot from the character's perspective or point of view. A two shot is a medium or close shot that's wide enough for two people. Another version of the two shot is the over the shoulder in which you show the character's perspective on a scene but include part of that character in the shot. A pan shot is one in which the camera moves horizontally around a fixed point from one part of the scene to another. And a tilt shot is a shot in which the camera moves up or down along a vertical axis. Remember though, these shots are all just tools, a way for you to tell a good story. The best piece of advice that I could give to students as they're about to interpret a piece of material that they've read visually for the screen is not to be, not to be afraid of it and not to be afraid of whether the drawings are perfect or not. The most important thing is to capture the essence of the idea so that the person operating the camera and the actors and everybody on set has a firm understanding of what you're about to put on screen.